Hey guys, welcome to Eternal Midnight. Um, today we're going to be talking about Valve. Uh, pretty, well, it's a pretty bit of a controversial topic, I'd say. Um, I personally think Valve they are in a position of being worse than EA, um, despite <laughs> EA getting a lot of the hate. I do think Valve do scummier things. Um, and so we're going to be delving into the uh, employee reviews because I saw a few other channels doing it and it was really interesting. I just wanted to get Chad's thought because he's not really a big Valve follower. Like I'm a bit overly... I'm like a stalker for Valve because <laughs> <laughs> I really want another Half-Life. But, you know, I mean, I, I was seven when episode two came out, just for context. Um, so we're going to be delving into that. And uh, the reason we're doing that is because uh, they've just announced they've got a VR headset. Um, I don't know if it's coming out or if it's being revealed, but th it said a date underneath that was May 2019. So um, the huge thing is that basically there's been Half-Life VR leaks for about three years since 2016. Um, which shows that it's in development and that the development hasn't died. It's in a healthy position of being made. Um, and there's some rumors that the VR is going to come out with a game, which makes the most sense because you want to show off your new tech uh, with software. So mm -hmm. um, my thinking is that basically Half-Life 1 showed off the uh, 3D realistic world that they built. It was um, the next step up from Quake and they pushed the limits and the boundaries and they really showed what gaming could be with Half-Life 1. Half-Life 2 did the exact same thing with character models, uh, storytelling and um, physics. So I think the next logical step is that Half-Life VR would show off the, uh, the you know, capabilities of VR technology. So, um, you know, the, there's a lot of things happening with Valve right now and I thought we could start off um, with a bit more of a fun topic where I go through some reviews, um, ask Chad what he thinks, if he... Uh, buys into the review if he thinks it's biased whatever um and then we'll go uh well then we can talk a bit about the vr headset and our predictions on that so uh, cool. yeah i'll get started with the reviews um and we'll uh we'll see how many of these we get through <laughs> should works be interesting yeah that works all right so uh, uh, and just before we get started i just want to say when it comes to like half-life mm -hmm. um i played the first one yeah. long ago <laughs> <laughs> i played every year and yeah, the expansion oh, packs, and nice. the remaster, and the second one, and the episodes, and the Portal games. Um, and I had, oh shit, what was that game called? The Orange Box? Yeah, yeah, that was a collection of Valve's games. The very yeah, few I, that they've made. Mm -hmm, I had that, and um, I'm yeah. not going to lie. I like Half-Life was cool. I mm -hmm. liked Portal better. <laughs> uh, I think it depends uh, like what your play style is. Mm -hmm. If you prefer puzzles, Portal's the go-to. If you prefer shooting, Half-Life is. Yep. See, cause me, like my my favorite uh, type of game is Legend of Zelda. So it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm more like I, I'm into like the puzzles and problem solving. Yeah. I, and I'm I am, and anyone will tell you this who I've played with online, I suck at shooters. I, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I played <laughs> Halo for years, and I would go, I, I would have luck rounds where I mm -hmm. would like. I'd go like, oh, I don't know, I'd get like 15 kills or something like that, and mm -hmm. I would only die twice. And then the next round, I would get one kill, and I would die ten times. So I am not good at shooters at all, and I basically just gave up on them. Uh, for me, it was basically I had to get a group of friends, and I had to beg them to let me play Counter-Strike with them, because I was atrocious at shooters. Uh, I begged <laughs> them, I begged them for years and years, and then eventually they turned around and they said, yeah, no, we'll play it with you. Uh, they got Smurf accounts finally, and they were like, yeah, it won't hurt our rank. Uh, I got dragged into Counter Strike, and uh, three years later, I'm an average rank of MG. <laughs> I'm not nice. good. I'm not bad. I'm mediocre, and I will take that. I will take that, and I will enjoy it. Um, <laughs> I've always loved shooters though, because Half Life was never skill based. It was just shoot shit, have fun, and mm -hmm. I love that. And I think the first one's age better than the second, so I, I don't really mind. I'm just excited that there may be a new Half Life game getting announced in May. We'll find out. So um, the first review on here, it's five stars. So we'll get we'll get off to a good start. Uh, <laughs> it's simply titled "Great Place to Work." The employee is a software developer. They approve of the CEO, and uh, their pros are basically friendly staff, um, good pay, good benefits, good experience, and their cons are it's a difficult role. They have long hours, slow content, putting it lightly, hard entry, hard interview. So um, have okay. you heard about have you heard about the slow development? struggles of, uh, of valve before uh i haven't i mean i know they they generally take a long time between games i mean that's mm. when did the first half-life come out like first, 20 it years was in ago the 90s, yeah um the 20th anniversary was i think last year um, yeah 
and then like two came out what a decade later or something yeah basically um the beta got leaked and people hated it so they had to remake most of the game which delayed it yeah it was a mess um the huge thing right now is valve uh, just for context they work in an office where you work on whatever you want there is no management um you just Oof. you go you you work on what you want and to them this is this whoa look you can do whatever you want we'll give you the funding your your own free developer doesn't work um left mm-hmm. for dead 3 got into development um it nearly like it got to a point where they were they were ready you know it was it was it was close and they had to sign an engine unreal source 2 now i think this is um this is all i don't think it's confirmed i'm not too sure um but essentially uh, they couldn't pick an engine, and uh, the game died. Um, Good lord! And that's how a lot serious? of their games go. Like, and a few insiders, Jeez. I think, leaked. Um, I'm not sure again if this is confirmed, so take it with a grain of salt. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have said there were many, many Half-Life threes in development, and all of them have ended up panned. So maybe Half-Life <laughs> VR will be the one that comes to light. But when I don't think we're going to be seeing a, uh, a a resolution to the cliffhanger of the last Half-Life game. Um, unfortunately so slow content is putting it lightly <laughs> and uh, kidding. it almost reminds to... it almost reminds me of um uh the time span between the first um starcraft and starcraft 2 it was it's like depressing. forever <laughs> that's how it feels a half life too like i was a kid uh i was seven um when episode two came out and i'm now 18 so it's, mm-hmm. it's in a while <laughs> hey that's how i felt uh this year when kingdom hearts 3 came out and yeah uh, well we'll talk about that another day but to say the to put it lightly it i don't think it was worth the wait i'm not gonna <laughs> lie i was not very i was i liked i liked a decent amount of stuff about it but i was not happy overall i was like i waited yeah. 10 years for a game that I beat in like two weekends. If that's what Half-Life VR turns out to be, I will be very upset. Hopefully not. We'll see. Uh, mm-hmm. The next review is No Games. <laughs> that's the title. <laughs> they gave it three stars. Um, and they said, I've been working at Valve Corporation full time, less than a year. Um, we get to go to Hawaii is the pro. Cons, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to lose my job. I'm making $15 a year and I've been put in the basement. <laughs> the advice to management please take me out of the basement so that's, that's obviously a joke one i love yeah. the pro we get to go to hawaii <laughs> <laughs> that's great like that's it there's no context to it it's not we go there for work or vacation it's just we go <laughs> <laughs> That one, that, that one was anonymous, so it's clear that someone's made an account for this, but uh, the next one seems <laughs> legit. So, um, high pay, low morale, that's the title. So, um, they don't recommend the company, they have a positive outlook, and they disapprove of the CEO. So, um, they've been working for Valve for more than 10 years, apparently, um, and they say the company pays well and has plenty of office perks, but the company is like a ship without a motor. There's lots of failures and low risk, poorly thought out ventures, and the senior people have been checked out for years. Wow. Well, mm. he can't hate it that much if he's been there for over ten years. But, but the then flip again, side, um, if you're working involved, the pay's got to be good, and yeah. you don't really have to do anything. <laughs> I just, um, uh, no, I'm just not one of those people. Like, I, I'm, I don't. Maybe I'm weird, but it's like when I go to work and I'm not doing anything, I'm bored as hell. So it's like yeah. when I go, I'd rather just keep moving. It makes the time go by faster, and it gives yeah. me like a sense of purpose like why else am i at work if not to get work done you know the impression i get whenever there's like bug fixes for old valve games or you know the current ones that are pretty much dead in terms of updates it Mm. to me says the valve employees are just going ah fuck it i feel like playing team fortress 2 fuck it i feel like playing (laughs) half life then they notice like a bug and they go huh i'll just fix that that's work right (laughs) <laughs> hey, it's, it, it, I, I get if, hey, it's a better method than uh, how EA has been handling Anthem, from what yeah, I've heard. Yeah, but that means that they're not doing anything, and they've got all this time to just sit around playing games and notice bug fixes no one else has. Right, well, that's what I mean. It's like, <laughs> I guess at least they're doing something, right? I'd, ra- I'd rather have the I EA model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where every time I fix mean, something, Val- you fix Valve have done scummy as shit. You saw Artifact. Oh, God. The card game where you lose all of your money to play it. No, no. The next <laughs> review uh, is by a former employee. So they did leave. 
Uh, they give it two stars. They called it Toxic Company. Uh, they don't recommend. They have a negative outlook and they disapprove of the CEO. All red flags so far. <laughs> um, they worked there for more than a year and the pros were high salary. So again, the high pay is probably why people stay around for so long. Uh, they have freedom, however short-lived is how they put it. Um, <laughs> cons, highly toxic work environment with heavy politics, random firings, random cancellation of projects. All the CEO does is he fires people. <laughs> <laughs> so what impression do you get off of that of Valve like straight away it's just it, I look at it as how is this company still afloat Steam if Steam didn't exist they'd have gone under no kidding it's like yeah. it's just it's obvious from what we've read already it's not a good It's aside from the pay it's just not a good place to work it doesn't no. it, it sounds almost like it's like people don't want to go to work like they get there yeah. and it's just like you're there to do a job, but like you said, there's no real leadership. So it's like there's nobody giving. I mean, everybody is not, you know, like capable of being a boss or a supervisor or yeah. a leader. So it's like some people need leadership. And sorry, that's just what you need to do as a company. As the CEO, you need to appoint supervisors and team leads and project managers. If you don't have any supervision, though, office politics rule. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's it. Once the people who are natural leaders gain their popularity and stand, uh, status. That's it. <laughs> the, the office becomes under control by the popular people. Um, and that, that's just how it will be run. And even if there isn't leadership, there'll be, there'll be social leadership in a way. And mm -hmm. um, I think it's such an idealistic work environment that Gabe thinks he can do. And I think he's so far into it now that he's just, he's so old and withered that he can't be bothered to completely change it now. And it's such a shame that's happened. Well, because they could probably get more stuff done if there was a leadership. It's like, yeah, you have a company. The point of a business is to make money and to supply a service. So it's like if leadership is what's lacking and that's why, you know, barely any games come out and it takes forever to get stuff done and stuff's always getting canceled. That screams right there. You need better leadership. That's oh, yeah. all it says. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for this cash cow that is Steam, um, I think they'd have gone. They would have definitely gone afloat, or they would have been making games regularly. Um, they're riding Steam, and I think when, if Steam gets pulled down by the competition, which I don't think it will, then mm -hmm. we'll see games coming out more regularly and Valve taking a step to change. But it'll take Steam coming down for them to even try that. Uh, and by then, I think it might be too late anyway. So it's it's a weird one. Oh, I've if something happened to Steam tonight, the mm -hmm. company I I have a feeling the company would be gone by week's end. You yeah the the current structure would not be able to pull back I don't think. But this one uh, the next review it is a lot more detailed so this will be a little bit of a longer read. Mm. Uh, okay so they give this three stars positive outlook with the disapproval of the CEO which is a common thing. <laughs> yeah. So a flawed experiment, but still viable if you can hold your nose from time to time. That's the title. <laughs> They've been yeah. working there for more than five years. So uh, the pros, Valve's flat structure and relatively limited bureaucracy really unlocks your ability to produce. If you're a multi-talented multi individual who can run a million miles per hour and are tired of other people getting in your way, Valve is the most productive environment you will ever see. Compensation can be excellent, and the perks, annual paid vacation, laundry service, personal training for self and spouse, great office views are wonderful. You can work with the smartest people in the world at Valve and just sit down for lunch with them whenever you want, and learn a ton about everything from hardware manufacturing to software engineering to network operations at scale. Okay, and then we're on to the cons here, which, mm. uh, ooh, cons are twice the size of pros. <laughs> <laughs> So again, on the flat structure, it really means that there's an informal power and influence hierarchy. So you have to basically be socially adept or you be, get blindsided repeatedly, like I mentioned earlier. Some employees are more equal than others and the ears are in mouthpieces of board members. Cash compensation can be average or below average for people with solid but not exceptional skills. Company leadership is allergic to the word policy. Libertarian to the extreme, unwilling to even agree on matching basic humanitarian charity contributions. Lots of both sides arguments and debates about online behavior. Being a jerk or worse to your coworkers is largely tolerated because the leadership does not place any value on being nice. Tiny <laughs> HR department tries, but they are necessarily subservient to the leadership. And at the highest levels, the company doesn't believe that HR should get involved in anything except hiring benefits and log logistics. If Gabe takes a personal interest in your area, you could find yourself suddenly overruled in ways that feel surprising and whiplash inducing given the otherwise autonomous nature of employment at Valve. Advice to management. 
pretty much everybody on the board should just retire already. The company would be in better hands if you abolish the hidden power structures and let your employees truly organize and make decisions by consensus instead of letting the loudest and or scariest and or most connected people win. What are your thoughts? Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I definitely agree with that because like like we've said, it's, yeah, it's just without leadership, you're 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 on a sinking ship. It's that's a fact. That's why you know, like to dive even into that metaphor. That's why ships have captains. They yeah. You you need leadership. That's just I don't understand how some of these companies can do it like this. And it's like, it, because like that, the CEO. I guarantee the CEO is out of touch with. Oh, okay, you know, it definitely is. Yeah, with what these uh, you know with what these developers are doing with games and ideas they have. It's like. You, you don't get it, man. It, it's these younger people who are coming in with these ideas of what you want to make. And it's like, yeah, I'm sure there are some bad ideas here and there, but it's like you, you need to put somebody in charge. Oh, yeah. Who knows what the who what who knows what we the people who are going to be lining your pockets with money who are going to be buying your products. You need someone who can connect with us to know what we want so you can make what we want. That's yeah. why I think. That's why I think EA is destined to sink also, except I, they'll always be safe because people buy their shitty games just to complain about them. It's but it's the like, sports games that are saving them right now. I think people have uh, figured oh, out. It. That, yeah. and sports games, I'll never understand sports games. No, no, same, just... same damn thing every year with an updated yeah. roster. Same damn games. Yeah, the thing keeping Valve afloat is Steam, and the thing keeping EA afloat is their sports games. I mm. personally play um, Battlefront 2. It's gotten better. I'm enjoying it currently. And I play Sims. I mean, as scummy as Sims feels at times, there are points <laughs> where I absolutely love it. Uh, the newest one has great building, and I really love being a creative person, so I'm hooked. <laughs> I'm fucked. But um, <laughs> I'm not, I don't buy their games regularly. I, I, it's such a shame, though, because there is no way to boycott Valve. They don't. They are monopoly on the... Uh, on the uh, PC gaming market, yeah. it's, I, you hate Disney. I, I, yeah, I mean, exactly. They're, they're the Disney of PC gaming. Um, yep. They it's monopolize like, yes. it and they don't do anything. And whilst their service is incredible, and I absolutely love Steam, it's riddled with scummy practice, riddled with a lack of uh, management, and it's it's terrible that Valve can get away with all this shit because they were the first to come up with the Steam Store, the the, the design of it all. Mm -hmm. it's a shame that that's happened but I mean what, what can you really do you can't boycott Steam that's when most of the games in PC yeah, are no on. kidding no one does discs anymore <laughs> and uh, I, I mean Epic Games is pulling some developers over but not enough and Origin is the same boat uh, so here's a one star review <laughs> <laughs> and this one's a, a long one again uh, a lot longer so uh, <laughs> fasten your seatbelt it's yeah. got it's got a, a one sentence pro and then about five or six paragraphs comments. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, get ready for this. So, toxic teams, traumatized workers, opaque management hierarchy. That's the title. <laughs> traumatized. <laughs> yeah, this one's good. I like this. Okay, so um, they've worked here for more than five years. Uh, they don't recommend it. They have a neutral outlook and, uh, not surprisingly, disapproves of the CEO. <laughs> So um, Gabe is a meme, but holy shit, stop, just step down. So <laughs> pros, Valve used to make good games. It's well known and it provides a somewhat competitive benefits package. That's that's the pros. Uh, Valve used to make good games. <laughs> yeah, the pro, the, one of the pros is a past tense. They were just scraping at the barrel. Um, and the cons start like this. I'm writing this as an act of kindness to other developers. I worked here for many years and I still speak with insiders after leaving and nothing fundamentally has changed yet. I waited a while before posting this review so I could think about my overall experience here and what I would like to tell others about it. Overall, I highly rec recommend you avoid this company right now because your long-term health and sanity are more important than anything they can offer you. There's nothing negative I can write that hasn't already been said here publicly on the web already. If you decide to go, then please remember this uh, this advice. 
First, if you are a new hot developer who's done something amazing for some other company, I will desire you basically like a trophy. If you do decide to go here, demand options, demand a startup bonus, and negotiate your initial, initial salary upward. Always do each without exception. The power is in your hands here, and Valve definitely has the ability to handle the upward pressure on its wages and benefits you and others will be applying. If you are someone Valve really wants, someone they could proudly show off around town, they will have one or two workers discreetly coach you before the actual interview. I witnessed this occur on two occasions. It won't matter if you flub the interview, you will be hired. If you aren't coached, they don't really want you. If you do get coached, then you better negotiate your butt off. If you can do so, talk to several teams before going to Valve. Try to find the least toxic team to join up with first. Find a team that is truly excited about you coming on board and helping them out. Ask them about their goals when they are going to ship, who their customers are, and about their milestones they've already completed. Try to determine if results actually matter to this team. Identify the leaders of the team, ask them how long they've worked there, and if and see if you gel with them. Avoid teams like the Plague that haven't shipped anything in years or are filled with old-timers, as they will tend to be incredibly toxic. Avoid teams that don't have strong support from Gabe or a board member. Avoid teams without crystal clear product goals and a ship date. The way to shut down these toxic zombie-like teams inside of Valve is to starve them of new hires, and if Valve won't do it internally, then ex valvers will do it externally by informing the world's developers about what to look for. Before you go to Valve, speak with at least a couple of ex valvers about what it's actually like to work there. Do not go there unprepared, and do not believe the developer marketing. Advice to management. Perhaps someday the company will change, but in order to do so, a lot of the old-timers will have to leave. New management will be have to be brought in, cliques broken up, and the hierarchical and non-self-organizing structure of the company will have to be candidly knowledged and tended to. I predict that this is exactly what's going to happen sooner or later, especially as the old-timers with stock retire to obscurity. The thought leaders and people actually in charge here completely externalize the health, sanity, and happiness of its workers. These people need to be quietly shown the door. If Val, <laughs> Val needs to discard its cult-like culture, its outdated slogan, and its crackpot phil philosoph philosophies about self-organization, or it will remain an extremely unhealthy workplace overall. Acknowledge that there are bosses, managers, and hierarchies here. Good. Lot, lot to unpack here. No kidding. So that, like I said before, there is a shadow structure that's been formed from popularity and the old timers that have lingered about, which he mentions. Um, it's not official though. It's a, it's sort of formed in the in the uh, absence of a structure. Yeah, it's just once again, it's it, it all come for me. It's just all gonna keep coming back to the same thing, mm -hmm. lack of leadership. And yeah. once again, like you said, it's just sitting there and riding off the coattails of steam because without yeah. that. Without that, they would have locked their doors long ago unless they'd changed the, uh, their business practice, which yeah. it, it's it's just re like hearing these reviews. It just shows just pure proof of your workers don't like not having a leader. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I went to work and it was just, you know, oh, you know, everyone's here, I guess just we got to do something. I'd be like, I, 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 uh, uh, either I got to be in charge and have my orders from my yeah. boss telling me to tell them what to do. Or I need someone directly looking at me and being like, this is what we're going to get done. Because it's just like, yeah. it, it's needed. That it, yeah. it, it's, I don't Honestly, get it. Um, right. I work in a volunteer job at a student newspaper. Um, I work huge shifts and everything. It's a very, very, very free workplace. Um, we don't really have bosses in the traditional sense. We don't have, you know, like a, a proper sort of... Um, we don't get told what to do or whatever. What happens, uh, it's very, very free. But even deadlines have an impact because we have um, until Wednesdays to get the page done. And that to us means we have to actually work. We have to actually, you know, we have to actually put some effort in. We have to do things. And if we don't put the effort in, they tell us that we've done shit. And that's that. Mm -hmm. There are like, like, it's very, very free, like what Valve is aspiring. But there's still deadlines and there's still repercussions, which is something like so small that you can implement that would have such a huge impact. They don't even have that. Well, it's like deadlines, deadlines for like video games or stuff like that. It's a good and a bad thing. It's a it good is. thing because it's a good thing because it, it drives you, it pushes you, you know, this needs to be yeah. done by this date because it needs to be released on this date. Yeah. But at the same time, you got the Dark when... Souls finales. Yeah, really, well, really get, shitty areas. Uh. Mm -hmm. Well, it's sometimes deadlines are the opposite. When you, I mean, sometimes it'll be like, oh, the deadline is this date. 
oh, it's not going to be done by that date. Yeah, fine. Screw it. We'll just ship the game broken and we'll just fix it through patches. Yeah. People will still buy it. And it's like that that's basically EA's business model is oh, yeah. ship ship broken, unfinished games and we'll take forever to attempt to fix them while making it worse. And but people but people keep giving them money. So it's like that's yeah. Deadlines can be lenient, though. That's the thing. You can have, like, internal deadlines for things that you want to get done by certain dates that you don't tell to the public. You know, like, Valve can still stick to their we don't tell the public when the game's coming thing, which gives them that leniency that, to avoid deadlines. But still having internal deadlines where they say, right, we want this portion of the game done by this time. If it's not, don't rush it. We'll extend the deadline slightly. But there are deadlines and mm -hmm. you have to abide by them if you do not and if you miss the deadline consistently or if the quality of the game is hindered because you cannot keep up the deadlines you will lose your job that's how it should be and i think yeah you mm -hmm. can extend deadlines somewhat not infinitely though that should have repercussions but if you have internal deadlines and don't tell the public when your game is coming out like well like doing then it can work um and i think that's the best way to work around the problem of mm -hmm. Deadlines being good, but also a bad thing. And that's how I'd personally handle the situation. But to avoid being repetitive and complaining about leadership, the huge thing I take away from this particular review is that um, he sort of brings up that when you're being hired, there's even some control there that they're going after trophies and they're mm -hmm. not interested in anything else but being able to say, look, we have this guy or this this girl. We have this person and um, they have that system in place and they coach people before the interview and the interview doesn't matter. That to me seems incredibly toxic before you even get into the workplace. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, could like what well, you've went, you went to job interviews before. Um, oh be yeah. Imagine oh, if I've, people got I've coached con before you. I've, I've conducted job <laughs> interviews at uh, yeah. my old job. How do you think uh, this sounds then uh, from your experience? It's just, it, I wouldn't want, I per personally, there's no way I'd work here. I mm -hmm. absolutely not. I need, it's like the job I'm at currently now, I'm the supervisor of at my location. Yeah. Um, and just supervising is all I've known for the past like seven years between mm -hmm. uh, two different places. One was a restaurant and now I'm in quality for the auto industry. But um, it's just like uh, that hiring process that just, no, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's different fields, obviously, video game developers and, you know, when I was in the restaurant industry, but it was like, for me, it was like, like interviews, the traditional interview is, you know, like questions and whatnot, but it's like when I was in the restaurant, it was just more like I had those, but for me, they weren't even really questions. They were just yeah. more, I needed something to kill. I needed something to make me have a conversation with this person so I could tell if they were going to be a right fit. For yeah. working in a restaurant and there were some that just weren't and some that were and frankly I didn't even care about the questions but it's like for I don't even know being coached before an interview to be a developer yeah. I what <laughs> and then the fact that you have to look you have to have you have to be told by uh, ex-employees be careful what team you go into the fact that when you get through the doors and it's that competitive for people to scoop you up and then they don't do it because they want you to work for them. Some do by the sounds of it, but some just want you as a trophy on their team. The fact mm -hmm. that it's so like we, we like grabbing at the new guy. Imagine being a new person at Valve. How intimidating that would be. Mm -hmm. I couldn't mm -hmm. imagine. And then like that, say you get stuck with a team of, like they said, some of the old timers who don't want to do anything. You're basically just showing up to work and you're you're getting paid. That's, I guess, the best yeah. part of all of it. You're still getting paid when you show up. But it's like you get in and it's like, OK, what are we going to work on today? And it's nah, not nothing, <laughs> not, not much. We're, I feel like gonna... that. I feel like it's the old timers that are sitting around playing Half-Life and uh, Team Fortress and <laughs> pumping out these shitty little updates that, oh, there's a slight, slight discrepancy in the water texture. Mm -hmm. Tiny little thing. Um, I feel like that's what the old timers are doing. Maybe I'm wrong, or maybe that's the new developers stuck with the old timers that are like, oh, what do I do? Play games? I don't know. But uh, the next review is called House of Bullies. <laughs> <laughs> they don't recommend the company, and they have a neutral outlook. Okay. Um, doesn't say how long they work there in this one. Uh, the pros say there's a lot of perks due to the constant money stream from Steam. That's a mouthful. Uh, great salary, high level of talent among most coworkers, used to make great games. Cons. Mm -hmm. 
The place is run like a schoolyard without adult supervision. Bullies and loud people get the attention and rewards. There's a definite though unspoken pecking order. Several cliques, if you're not in the right clique, you won't have good experience. You can be <laughs> fired out of the blue without warning, even if you've worked there successfully for years. They don't make games anymore. You could work on developing a project for years and just have it dropped for no good reason other than one of the self-appointed leaders decided he wasn't interested anymore. They sell you a real bill of goods coming in that you'll have all the freedom in the world to do what you want, work on things that interest you, and that they just want a lot of highly creative people to make great things. But after a short time there, you start to see how the sausage is made and what you were told it was an exaggeration at best. Advice to management. It's such a poisonous place that I don't have any advice for them, really. Make games again. Get the nerd bullies in line or get rid of them and get back to what made Valve great in the past. Right now it feels like it's circling the drain, but the higher-ups there don't really care because they're all rich. I know I sound bitter, and I am, but this <laughs> is my experience there. Some people do well there, but many find the backstabbing nature of the company very stressful and disturbing. Yeah. Wow. This guy, I mean, I have to clarify, all these reviews are anonymous. A few of them could be fake, for all we know. That has it, to be said, but I mean, a it, lot of them have the similar themes in common. Well, and it's just sad because hearing these, it's like, these are obviously from people who got into this field because they wanted to make good, fun mm. video games. And where to go other than Valve, who revolutionized several genres and games. Yeah. And then and you get like, there. <laughs> and then that's what happens. You get there and it's just, no, nobody, it doesn't sound like anybody wants to be there for starters. No. Uh, it, like you said, uh, work on a project for years, and then the head goes, nah, we don't want to release that game anymore. It's and it's like, not well, even just... the... They're not even an official head. They're just someone that's in the office who's gained popularity. God. How it... shit must that be? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what's... And like that, I think we've heard that from another person also, aside from this one. Mm -hmm. Make games again. It's like, that... Yeah. That's what we want. We as the consumer want the games. We exactly. we want good, fun games. Make them, and we will buy them if they're good. Valve used to be incredibly passionate. They saw Quake, and they went, you know what? We'll 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 up you one. You know, ID Software, you've done great. You made Wolfenstein, you made Doom, and you made Quake. You've built the foundations of the FPS genre. We're gonna revolutionize it. That's what happened, and now they they don't. I think VR, maybe they'll get back into the swing of it with the new VR headset. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, that's their comeback. We'll see in uh, May, but I'm not too sure. So I'm just going to read this final review, and then we can talk a bit more about the VR, I think. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then that'll be it. Should yeah. be good. <laughs> These cool. reviews have been interesting. Um, <laughs> they're very... I mean, there's not many positive ones. I think we've had one or two, <laughs> and one of them was a joke. <laughs> so, uh, we get to go to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> oh god so um utopia for some but painful when the fit is bad emphasis on the sum uh, doesn't recommend positive outlook disapproves of the ceo Come on. <laughs> well it's unanimous nobody likes the ceo <laughs> they've been working there for more than five years yeah. okay so in terms of fringe benefits, Valve has quite the impressive repertoire. Good health, uh, good healthcare benefits, including the on-site gym, physical trainers, and a wide variety of food available. Great paternity and maternity benefits. Paid annual company trip. Laundry, barber, and massage services provided on-site. <laughs> you get to work with brilliant peers, and most peer interactions are generally very positive. That goes against what they've, uh, the other guys have said, so that's a bit right. interesting. Uh, but then the cons are a lot longer, so don't worry. <laughs> uh, the flat structure is somewhat a sham there is a badly hidden hierarchy and at the top are some very smart peoples but there are also some bullies who do whatever they want awful communication externally and internally terrible system for feedback and compensation okay so I just want to bring this up because this is something that a few reviews that uh, we're not going to go into uh, do discuss and it's sort of that they uh, they have to give peer reviews of one another um, which I don't think is a good system when you've got a mm -hmm. hidden uh, hierarchy of bullies controlling the workplace and i mean these are all anonymous so they could be fake but the mm -hmm. fact that so many of them have picked up on this whole internal shadow hierarchy that controls you know old timers and bullies that rise to the top and then control them having a, a peer system of reviews is a terrible idea with something like that and gabe yes. i don't he um uh, someone emailed him about this peer review system and gabe said it's still uh it's still a part of valve so that hasn't gone away mm. so um 
Annual feedback collection seemed to go into a void and not actually taken into account. There was some attempt to revamp the process this year, but unclear on what is being changed. There's constant anxiety to fit in. Everyone around you is anxious about their job and what they're supposed to do, often without clear direction. This gets worse at, as the end of the year approaches as everyone prepares for the peer review process. Working with people who are constantly anxious about their jobs takes a toll on everyone, regardless of the great benefit offerings. Leading talent with a combination of the reasons above talent with the reasons above talent keeps leaving in droves adding stress to the remaining small teams fit this is only meaningful to company rock stars but there are necessary tasks that come with producing successful products that people are reluctant to pick up at times because they're not sexy projects yeah so it's like if something isn't you know glamorous they don't want to do it so uh, advice to management there is nothing i can add here that hasn't already been said before valve will continue to do well for now but there's a severe disconnect with most of the employees and the upper management and there is plenty of general resentment i think that's a good note to end the uh, the reviews on mm-hmm. um it's just like- yeah it's just overall what i've what we've learned from this is just it's just an extremely toxic place to work that sounds like it sounds like people who are just miserable it, it like we said i'll say for the final time no leadership and it's just like that what how can you enjoy working somewhere where i think at least two or three people said it uh when you're constantly afraid that you're just going to get fired for no e- yeah. explanationable reason it's like no your your morale is so low at that point because you fear walking into work because you're like is t- is today going to be the day I get fired so it's like yeah you, you can't accomplish anything because you're in absolute terror every day yeah I mean it's such a mess of a system and I think um if you're so scared of being fired would you even want to bother work starting any work because the mm-hmm. whole thing is that you have to you have to start the work and you have to keep the work going without you it falls apart. So if there's a risk of you getting fired all the time, why start anything? It's too yeah, risky. There's because they'll no just, reason. They'll just blame you if they decide they don't like it. They'll just go, you wasted all this time and energy and money. You're out of here. And it's now, like, I, I want to say I'm uninformed uh, to an extent on the Artifact drama, but I'm pretty sure they fired a few of the guys working on Artifact. Uh, I might be wrong, so just want to clarify that. Maybe in the editing, check up on that uh, magical mm-hmm. chat. Um, and put like a disclaimer if I'm wrong, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure that um, the, they fired some of the artifact team, uh, and I'll look at that after the show just to find out for sure. But I'm, uh, I mean, that was because artifact bombed. But the whole thing was they were so out of touch because twenty pound to buy the game, then you have to buy the cards and buy the tournaments and buy, oh. buy, buy, buy. It's like I am not gonna buy a game that drains my wallet. I, if I buy a game, I want to be able to play the game. I don't want to keep putting money into it. You know what? That's exactly why um, (laughs) I should have known better before I bought the stupid thing. You bought uh, Artifact? No, Um, no, 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 not Artifact. (laughs) Um, I should have known better before I bought the damn game because I had the same thing when I bought uh, Skylanders. Oh, I heard about that. And it was like I I bought the initial game with the set with Spyro, the Portal, and two other figures. Mm -hmm. And I basically beat I got as far as I could with all three figures in like two, like maybe two weeks. And then I'm sitting there and I'm like, am I really going to start going out and buying those damn things? Those stupid figures for like, yeah, I don't, I don't remember that 10 or 20 bucks, whatever. Yeah. But I was just like, I just dropped 60 bucks on the game. And now to continue playing it, I have to keep spending 10 or $20 for new figures. And I was like, yeah. you know what? Forget it. I just, so basically I just went to the store and sold the whole thing. Cause I'm That's... like, it's not worth it. That's why I didn't get into Lego Dimensions, which I was so excited for, because it was like, oh, Doctor Who and Portal and stuff, but you have to buy the sets, and I was like, I I mean, no, I'm all right. Uh, That's my huge problem with Sims, because getting into that's a nightmare. Luckily, they gave Sims 2 and all its packs away for free, which, Mm -hmm. yeah, kudos. At least least with Nintendo, like, I don't like the Amiibos. I think they're really Mm -hmm. stupid. But you know what? At least you, You, at, at least by not buying them, you still get to play the game. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, PlayStation are the same. I think Nintendo and PlayStation are really, really good at this. Um, they're the bastions of hope in the dying gaming world. <laughs> well, Xbox. I, I, I don't even understand how Xbox is still around. I, I, no. I think it's just Halo that's keeping them alive because, what is it? I think at the beginning of the year I read an article that like did a breakdown of like all three of the big systems or something like that. It's like Xbox sold the least. 
and it had like yeah. zero it had zero exclusives and i'm like mm-hmm. that's what keeps systems that's like uh what is it like me i i have a i have a switch because i i, lo- I mean i love nintendo games but it was uh-huh. like i have a switch because i'm like i want the new um i want the new pokemon when it comes out i wanted let's go eevee yeah uh, a Breath of the Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Super well, Smash Brothers. That's They're why I have a PS4 yeah. and a PS3 and a PS2 and a, and a Wii U, which I got for backwards compatibility. <laughs> I did. I bought an Xbox One S because it was on sale and it, it doubles as a 4K Blu-ray player and an Xbox 360 because some games are backwards compatible. So I was like, you know, I'm going to buy one just because a 4K Blu-ray player is the same and I can play Xbox 360 games now. It's all mm-hmm. that it was for me. Because uh, the original, like Xbox 360, had some good exclusives. Like they mm-hmm. used to be good. Fable oh, 2, definitely. The three, I'd say the, I'd say between the 360 and the PS3 in that era, I'd say the 360 won. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I preferred it. But um, so let's let's move on to something a little bit more positive. <laughs> I mean, the, I, this is getting to a long episode, but the reviews are quite fun to read through. Mm-hmm. I mean, you learn a lot about Valve <laughs> from them. Um, but to move on to something more positive, the VR headset, um, they just dropped out of nowhere. And mm-hmm. this is something that's been leaked for a while. It's called Valve Index. So a lot of people are like, oh, is this an index of their games? What are they doing? Are they d-? It's clear the name is just like, oh, people keep leaking stuff. Let's just throw them off and call it some random shit that means something else. <laughs> <laughs> so they released a picture, and it doesn't really show you too much, but there's been leaked pictures of their VR headset before, so we know a little bit about it. Um, and underneath it, it says May 2019. So people are debating, is this the release date, or is that going to be when we get some information? Um, a lot of people seem to think release date. I think that's optimistic. I think we're going to find out more about it then. Um, and the whole thing that people are excited for is that Gabe has said time and time again, they're working on three full VR games, and we know Half-Life VR is in development. We know Half-Life has been the forefront for so many technological advancements and showcasing these in gaming. And mm-hmm. so the logical step is, oh, we've made a new VR headset with all this brand new tech, and it's going to be cheap, and it's going to be incredible. It's going to excel beyond the current VR technology. What better way to show it than using the Half-Life brand? So that's why I believe it'll be Half-Life. And if I'm wrong, and if it isn't, I'm going to be severely depressed. I, but, um, you know, it's funny. They'd almost be stupid for it not to be. Unless, yeah. unless watch. You know what? Watch it be something that's going to take you completely by surprise. Oh, okay. And watch it be like Left 4 Dead 3 or something. I doubt that because um, the Left 4 Dead team, uh, Turtle Rock, they mm. left Valve and they went and made Evolve, which didn't do too well. And now mm. they're making, um, because they learned from Evolve, they learned that they made some mistakes there. So they're going back to their roots and they're making a zombie co-op game. Um, and they're saying, we've learned so much from all the games we've made in the past now that we think we can make the best game we've ever made. And we're calling it Back for Blood and it's a zombie co-op game with PvP and PvE. So it's Left 4 Dead. It's a spiritual successor. And they keep denying it, but it's a co-op zombie game called Back for Blood. How how much more (laughs) obvious can you be? So um, I don't think it'll be Left 4 Dead 3. I think that died. There's been no Mm -hmm. evidence of it in development. Um, Then it, you know what? You're right. It should be, it should be Half-Life 3. mm -hmm. It needs to, because it's like, this is, it, it doesn't, it wouldn't wouldn't make sense not to do it because it's like you, you need a big, to sell a new piece of technology, you you need need something, yeah, you need something recognizable for people to look at it, something and like that. You want to sell this thing, our flagship game for it, Half-Life 3. You're going to get all the Half-Life fans. Oh, it won't be Half-Life 3 though. It'll be a spinoff. You think so? Um, Yeah, uh, I think the big thing that we know is um, a lot of the things in the files don't seem to link to what we know Half-Life 3 would be. And that's somewhere set in the Arctic. The original writer left, um, no. Mark Ladle. So to continue the cliffhanger, they'd either have to use the story he leaked online, mm-hmm. or they'd have to come up with something new, which might insult fans who've now seen the leaked story and taken that as canon. Um, and there's also fans working on his story, making it Mark Laidlaw Half-Life 2 Episode 3, Project Borealis. Mm-hmm. Um not to mention that it was going to be episode three, not Half-Life three. So even if we did okay. get that, I think it'd be an episode. Um, the rumors have been that it's uh, going to be a prequel to Half-Life two, and it's going to be okay. set during the, the Seven Hour War when the Combine invaded Earth, and you'll be playing as Alex Vance. Mm. Um, that's interesting to me. I'm really excited to see if that's how it is, because the Seven Hour War Combine invading Earth, taking it over in a measly seven hours, interesting. Because you'd lose. You're playing the loser. <laughs> 
Hey, that's uh, that's exactly how Halo Reach was, and Halo yeah. Reach is one of my favorite games. So I'm honestly very, very excited if it's that. Um, I don't think they could do Half-Life 3 Justice now. But like you said, I mean, Half-Life makes the most sense because it's their flagship title, and I think Valve are dumb, but they're not dumb. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the internal structure, pathetic. We know that. We, we went through that. It's a joke. But at the same time, even though Gabe's out of touch calling Artifact the Half-Life 2 of card games, I think they know money. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I think they look at the HTC and Oculus and they go, huh, they didn't sell that well. They were really pricey. People aren't excited because there's no games behind them and they're expensive. So mm-hmm. why would people buy them? Then they look at the PlayStation VR, cheap and it has a lot of games and it sold well. So what are they going to do? They're going to release a VR with games that's cheap. They're going to, surely they're not that dumb. I think they see money. They know money. <laughs> they know finances. Well, it's uh, like anything. You sell the initial product for a low price and you make your money back on the games that exactly that, that's, you want it all that's all that should be your main goal get the system into the customer's hands because yeah. once they have the systems they're going to buy the games if you make the system mm-hmm. too expensive now they're not going to buy any now you've taken away that ability to buy anything so mm-hmm. it's get the system in their hands they'll buy the games later that's just exactly. how it goes because once they have the system they want to justify having the system and i think valve having steam behind them they can afford to take a loss um definitely so i think if they push these vrs out at a loss or at cost i think they can afford to do that and um in doing so if you release it with uh, i think the rumor was it would have a bundled discount which you'd get a game with it Mm -hmm. um if you could buy a vr headset let's say with half-life um it's been 10 years since the last one and you can buy into it for 150 pound let's say i I would do that personally um i'd be into that because one i'd get a whole new bit of tech and i'd get a new game for 150 pound that would sell me oh definitely i mean Um, it'd be and for me um yeah it'd be a justifiable price to see if i even like it and i yeah. wouldn't and if i didn't it wouldn't be you know i didn't drop 300 dollars on this thing i'm dropping 100 or 150 and to me i mean it's still that's still money but at the end mm-hmm. of the day like i said it's not three or four hundred dollars that i'm taking yeah. a risk on and i think the people that did buy the uh the vrs they've enjoyed it a lot of them um but the problem i have is the games are so short there's not that there's like no AAA games really out there that are just made for VR. There's like versions of games. You know, Resident Evil got a version. Um, Serious Sam got a version. But is there any real big gigantic AAA games made mm-hmm. to push the boundaries of VR tech? And nope. they're so limited because of um, the the risk of getting nauseous, which I know Valve are working on. There's been some rumors with them, knuckles, some leaks around that, which is like a handheld thing. I'm not too sure because I think right now you use a controller, which is meant to be really like nauseous and jarring. I think they've um, there was leaks with something where they've tried to design a new thing to combat that. So honestly, I think their new VR, they're not just going to release a VR that's the same as the others in the market. They have to justify it. And knowing Valve, they'll push the boundaries and there'll be new tech in this VR. There'll be new ways of playing. It'll be the next, I think we're seeing the next generation of VR. And I said this when VR came out. If you buy in the first generation, you're showing that there's a market for it. But I don't think enough people will. And I think that it'll be the second generation that really brings VR into mainstream. Mm-hmm. And if this, if Valve are doing this now, then my prediction was right, and I might get a new Half-Life. That I'm a happy man. <laughs> I'd be, de- you know what? I uh, personally, I think it'd be cool to see uh, if they do like a Portal Three or something like that with mm-hmm. the VR. I think that would oh, be incredible. <laughs> think of that. You know when you fall through the floor and you come out the ceiling and exactly. it's in the- oh, That's exactly what I'm thinking of. You know how many kids? <laughs> You know how many kids could get off school by doing that? <laughs> no, I'll just quickly get up early, put my VR heads on. All right, quick. Oh, I've thrown up, man. I can't go to school. <laughs> That'd be so cool. For me, it was having a teaspoon of peanut butter, which I'm severely allergic to. But that is another method. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think um, I don't see where Portal can go story-wise, personally. I think it ended right. perfectly. Uh, mm-hmm. My hope was that the Half-Life 3 would incorporate the Portal gun. Because it, it would incorporate, uh, the end. I don't know if you've seen the ending of Half-Life 2, so I'm not going to spoil anything, but the whole thing is they're going after Aperture Science tech. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously the Portal gun could come into play. Uh, so my thought was, oh right, Portal 2 had a definitive ending, Half-Life had isn't, but they're going to Aperture Science stuff. Bring the Portal gun and mix the two. Brilliant, perfect idea. Um, 
shared universe. Shared yeah. universe is our end. Come on. So Take I wouldn't of it. exactly. So I wouldn't do a port. Well, they're already shared, but I wouldn't do a. They were shared before the MCU. I'm pretty sure, but uh, I wouldn't do a Portal three. I'd do a Portal spinner like the robots okay. in the second one. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't continue Shell's story. I'd go back, maybe even a prequel where you learn about the origins of Aperture Science. Because um, what we got in essence was the Half Life two world. We didn't get to see the Half Life one world of Portal. Um, the early days of it when they were testing and that was still pretty fucked there was a lot of stuff going on there that was questionable ethics wise so i'd love to see a prequel or i'd love to see a spin-off about glados maybe after the events of portal 2 building robots and still testing or you could mm-hmm. do it before shell wakes up there's so many little areas in portal that they can then build a spin-off out of and half-life has had one two three um yeah three spin-offs and two episodes so mm-hmm. you know there's more than two Half-Life games, guys. <laughs> exactly. There's, there's and if more. they're and just like looking over their catalog, it's like maybe it's time to, you know, obviously you need one of your big recognizable names to sell yep. this headset. I believe you're gonna need a you're gonna need something that people know. You can't release yeah. it and just be like, you have to have a recognizable IP on it. That's and just, the only one available is Half-Life. Mm-hmm. What the, yep. the portal's too risky with nausea. Like this, mm-hmm. that's way too risky right now with the current tech. No way. Left for Dead, done. That's yep. moved on. We've got Back for Blood as the spiritual successor. No way it's Left for Dead. That leaves half life. Yep. I'm so, so optimistic. <laughs> Valve keep fucking pulling at my heartstrings that I'm scared to be this optimistic. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's just, it's getting to the point too where it's like, they need to start making some new IPs probably. They need, yeah. it's like, if you're going to hope to sell, it's like, that's another part of, What's going to come with this system is it, you better have a long list of games that are under development for this right now because you can't release it and only have two or three games under your belt. It's like you mm-hmm. you would if that's all it is, it's like you won't get me to buy it then because I'll just be like, oh, there's only three games. And what if I don't like two of them? Yeah, exactly. I think I will buy into it purely for the Half-Life IP. Um, mm-hmm. They need to keep me going after that, though. The whole th- hook with it, though, is that it'll be able to play all the current VR games, so there'll also okay. be that library available to you. Um, so that's a plus, I guess. Um, but the whole thing, I think, is you'd have to have more IPs, like you said. I think the best thing to be, do, personally, would be to expand on the Half-Life universe with the, mm-hmm. with alternate IPs, because look at Portal. It's so disconnected from Half-Life, but it still links in. It's still... Um, it still grabs onto the Half-Life brand and mm-hmm. uses it. That hooks people. And it expanded on the world of, um, you know, it expanded on Half-Life's world in such a great way. We got this whole rivalry between Black Mesa and Aperture Science that was brilliant. It explained mm-hmm. the events of Half-Life 1 more. We also got the events of the future Half-Life games that never happened being more in-depth and more um, connected. It was such a nice world-building technique that um, it was around the same time the MCU started. It was like 2008, I think, when the first poll came out, somewhere around there. Um mm-hmm. So it was it was during the early beginnings of the concept of the cinematic universe, but in video games. And they were doing it around the same time Marvel Studios were. And mm-hmm. I'd love to see that in gaming, but they did it in such a good way where they weren't reliant on each other. There's Portal fans that don't enjoy Half-Life. There's Half-Life fans that don't enjoy Portal. They made it so different that they can have different audiences. And they can do that again in VR. They, there's mm-hmm. no doubt about it. And they can ride the Half-Life brand, even if the games aren't Half-Life. Exactly. But, I mean, I'm optimistic for it. It'll be Mm -hmm. as... So, basically, overall, what we've we've come to... At least what I've come to my conclusion with, with everything we've gone over, is just the company is... The basically the company is a mess that's running yep. on luck, <laughs> and yeah. if they wanted to make more money than they already are, because clearly they don't want to make that much money right now. Yeah, all they'd have to do is just like we said, end of the day, get some better leadership. Because like this, with this headset coming out, if they want this thing to be a success, it's they they've got a lot of cleaning up they need to do in house. It feels like because it's oh, like. Yeah. You don't want to get something like this and then it's just it's it comes out and it fades because you had no games or no good games to back its existence up. So mm-hmm. I'm I, I mean, I'll be interested to see it when it comes out. And like I said, if it has a decent library of games that seem interesting, then bam, I'll be sold. Why not? 100 percent. And, and just, you know uh... what? Re-release re-release. I, this is what I want. Uh-huh. I want a game that's got all the half lives on it and both portals on it. 
why I, don't I have something like? Why don't we have something like yeah, that right now? I what I would do is I would just go and uh, I would grab the Crowbar Collective and have Black Mesa, put that in a bundle with the other ones, put it on the new consoles. That would be easy Definitely. enough. Call, call it the Blue Box with remasters on it. Exactly. Easy <laughs> and then you've got you know the second one. And just to end, um, I think the HTC Vive was released and that was worked alongside with Valve. Um, and that didn't have any games to go with it. And look what happened. I don't think Valve are going to make the same mistake twice. Hopefully I'm not wrong, because I think Gabe can still kick people into shape and say, make a game. I think mm-hmm. the VR team of Valve does sound passionate, because um, what a lot of the uh, reviews talked about was software, whereas their hardware. So I think it's a bit different. Um, we didn't read any hardware reviews. I'm not sure if there are any. So I'm not sure if their side of Valve is any different. But if it is, then we might get lucky and we might finally have a Golden Age of Valve come back again. I really hope so. But um, I, I mean, just to clarify again, the reviews are anonymous. They could be fake. You have to take mm-hmm. them with a grain of salt. And a lot of Valve is rumor, speculation, and leaks. So not everything in the video is confirmed. But uh, I think we both agree that Valve does sound like a messy company, and even if the reviews are somewhat fake or fake completely, Valve haven't made games in a long time. A lot of their projects have been cancelled. Something's clearly wrong. Yep. So, so uh, are you guys optimistic for uh, Valve VR? I mean, that's a huge thing. Um, if not, like, why are you pessimistic? I, I can understand it, to be fair. But it's new <laughs> technology. I mean... I mean, it's it's still new technology, and sometimes new tech scares people off. But mm-hmm. I just think, you know, give it some time, and you know, it, it, like you said, if it's a good, affordable price, which is what we're thinking, like we said, like a hundred, two hundred fifty, mm-hmm. if it's coming out for that, I mean, you really don't have you, you don't really have that much to be afraid of in giving it a chance. If you see a game that looks interesting for it, give give it a shot. You could. That's how I always say. Whenever it's something new, I know I know new stuff scares people, but it's like you know what? If you don't try something new, you never know what could have been. Like that. Exactly. Say you see this thing, you see a game for it, and you get it, you play it, it, turns into one of your favorite games. If you hadn't bought it, you never would have known. Exactly. So I mean, just to end it, um, we do talk about stuff other than Marvel. We've proved. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you guys want to hear more geek talk, or you know, we, we're going to cover a wide variety of stuff because me, Chad, and Logan all have different interests uh, outside of uh, superheroes that we're bringing to the table. So uh, if you want to see like a wide variety of geek stuff, feel free to subscribe. And I'm surprised if anyone stuck around this long. But no kidding. <laughs> hey. But, I, oh, and just for everyone, real quick. Logan just wasn't able to make it to this episode, um. Mm-hmm. So he'll, but he he'll be he'll be back soon. Don't worry. Oh, 100 percent. Uh, and I'm not sure when this one will go up because I'm going on holiday next week. Mhm. So uh, we'll see. Coming coming to America. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, feel free to subscribe and leave a like. Awesome. Talk to you guys soon. There we go. All right.